Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, March 21st, 2016. What's going on? How are you? This wonderful, gloomy Monday where I'm at. It's gloomy out here. Chance of fucking showers. Which would be great, you know, because how it works out here in Los Angeles is we basically, every three years, we get all of our rain for three years, essentially. That is how it works. And I know a lot of people think like, oh, my God, that must be so wonderful. You know, you just wake up every day knowing the sun's going to shine. It fucking drives you crazy after a while. Um, fortunately, I travel enough. I get on the road again. Meeting Trump fans and some voting for that old guy. What the fuck's Bernie Sanders? He wants to take all the money from the fucking rich and give it to the poor. And Donald Trump, he doesn't like Mexicans. Um, <laughs> and Hillary's going to drive right between those two fucking lunatics. Oh, good Lord. Jesus fucking Christ. I haven't been watching, but I know that that's what's going to happen. And all you broads out there who are fucking excited to finally get a fucking clam into the fucking Oval Office. Okay. This, I understand. I, I don't understand. I'm not a fucking woman. I don't know what it's like to walk by a construction site. And have a bunch of people communicate that they find me sexually attractive. You know? You know, there is a positive way to look at that. If you take away all the sexual assault vibe from it. It's kind of a, you know, a nice tip of the construction cat. You know, I don't walk by and they go, hey, you funny motherfucker. I get, no I get nothing. I get silence. I get snickers. Hey, fucking Casper, right? I, get, I may make fun of my lack of mel is it melatonin pigment. Melatonin, isn't that fucking... Uh, I forget if that's a fruit, and that's not the skin cancer. Don't you need melatonin? Oh, Jesus, who gives a fuck? I'm just saying, right? Just because somebody has a vagina doesn't mean because you also have a vagina that they are going to do what's right for you. Think about all the presidents that have had dicks. <laughs> Which, as far as I know, has been all of them. But you never know. You never know. You never know back in the day. There were no cell phone pictures, right? There was no video cameras. You had no idea. You know, I, you know Andrew Jackson, he could have been like, you know, he looks like one of those broads on fucking, uh, the fuck's the name of that show? The Golden Girls. He looked like one of the Golden Girls. Sort of their hipper, younger one, you know? He really had that middle of the ground, you know, that is it a chick, is it a dude, Roger Daltrey, early 80s haircut, you know, except it was a powdered wig over there. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, just because somebody has the same fucking thing as you does not mean that they're going to do what's good for you or that you're now going to get more stuff. Like, look, she's in the White House. Doesn't that mean I get a corner office? No, it doesn't. Fuck do you have to do with her? <laughs> I got to admit, yeah, if I see a redhead achieve something, I don't feel excited like, oh, it's only a matter of time before that comes around my way. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, well Bill, it's not like redheads are a minority. Yes, we are. An unseen minority. I told you. Walking amongst you, listening in on your conversation, reading your emails. We're here, man. We're from another. We're from fucking Mars, the red planet. That's where we came from. We came here, right? We look just like you guys, but then we fucked up when we entered the atmosphere, right? We, we got a little fucking singed up there and burned our pubes. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. It's a fucking gloomy day. It is a good goddamn gloomy day. I hope the fucking the goddamn clouds part. Um, anyways, old uh, old freckles. He's looking for a new car. I'm looking for a new car, baby. A new car. And I, I got to admit, I actually feel like I'm, uh, you know, like leaving the Prius behind. You know, I've had I had almost eight years with the thing. Runs like a fucking top. I don't know. I just want to get something new. I got a buddy who might buy it. I don't know. I'm a frugal son of a bitch. I'm probably just going to go look. But, you know, it's a good a good time to look for a fucking car is on a rainy day. You know, all those fucking tool shed fucking salesmen. They are the worst. The car, car salesmen are the lowest of the low. 
of fucking uh, salespeople. And you know what's funny? They know it. They wouldn't even lie about it. They know what the fuck they do. I mean, they they are like one rung below a drug dealer. <laughs> At least with drugs, you know, you get some sort of a high. Well, I guess when you buy a car, you do. You know, I don't fucking, they, they are just like, I don't know. The great thing is, is I really don't need a car. So I'm in a great negotiating, uh, negotiable, negotiator, negotiable position. I'm just going to walk over and be like, yeah, I like that. And this is what I'm going to pay. And uh, so go discuss it with your manager and come back and come back with that number or something less, or I'm just going to get in my car. You trading that in? Nope. I could sell it to my buddy or I can just drive across the street, not take on all this fucking debt. And just go get myself a ham sandwich. Huh? What do you say there, stupid tie? Go talk to your manager. Um, I always talk a good game and then I go in there and I get fucked because at the end of the day, I just I don't want to be there. And it's just I don't give a shit if it costs me a few grand more. It's like, how much more do I have to pay to get you to shut the fuck up? And they know it. You know what I mean? You ever hear women talk about how guys just wear them down sometimes and they just they just sort of blow them to shut them up and just get them on their way? That's what car salesmen do to me. No, they don't blow me. They uh, they just fu- they do wear me down, though. They fucking wear me down. And I'm just like, Ugh. you know, I, I don't. OK. I remember when I bought my Prius, I was just like, I went in, I said, listen, I'm paying this and that's it. And they go, well, we're not giving you it for that. It's a hot car. We sell like three a day. And I'm like, well, then I'm leaving. And then they go, all right. And then I went, all right, I'll pay what you want me to. (laughs) I am the fucking worst. I want all you salesmen to know that a sucker just went through the dough. Um, That's going to be me in about fucking two hours. Um, All right. Where the hell am I? What am I talking? Oh, you know what? I'm actually really enjoying. I actually had a cigar. I told you for the first time. And I got to admit, I kind of didn't. I liked it. I liked it. It did. But there was way more. um, I don't like this shitty taste in my fucking mouth the next day than there was that I enjoyed that. And I am on the precipice of uh, just straight up quitting those fucking things, which would make me feel really good, to be honest with you. Like I said, if I keep smoking these things this summer, I'm a four-year smoker, something I never thought I'd be. Now, I'm not going to start crying right now like some broad that just won an award pretending to be a nurse on, you know, some fucking show. You like me. You really like me. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't need that shit in my life, although I got to admit, I've, I, I do. Enjoy, uh, do I enjoy them? I think I remember that I enjoyed the last one I had. I li- I liked it, but I didn't. Uh, afterwards, I was like, "Ugh, Jesus Christ!" This fucking taste in my mouth. So, um, do would you guys consider me a smoker if I smoked one New Year's Day, the Super Bowl, my birthday, and then on one of those Jewish holidays in September? <laughs> I, I needed I needed four. I'm thinking like once every three months. What the fuck, hey? My birthday's June. So I come out of the gate, right? Boom. January 1st, I smoke one. And then February 3rd is the Super Bowl. And then it's nothing in March, nothing in April, nothing in May. And then in June for my birthday, bam, I smoke one. And then, um, I don't know, maybe that big college game I go to every year. You know? I don't know. I have no idea. I think, you know, so, oh, I remember what the fuck I was going to tell you guys. Remember I was telling you last time? There was something I wanted to tell you, but I, I couldn't remember what it was. Um, I tried to make gnocchi the other night. Did I tell you that? Gnocchi? However the fuck you say it? What a goddamn fucking disaster. Fucking disaster. You know what? This is basically, it just tasted like, you know, just imagine what cookie dough would taste like minus everything that makes it taste good. It was just blobs of shit. Blobs of flour. Um, what happened was, what was, I was, uh, I went on the internet and I was watching these fucking chefs make this shit. And what they do is when they go to mix it, they fast forward through it or they just jump cut because they feel that it's boring and that no one's going to watch the rest of it. And that right there, that's the key right there. It's like they open the playbook and then they just go, they fan through every fucking page and then they're like and that's the game plan for the 
that we're going to run this season. Any questions? On two. On two, ready, break, right? And you're like, what the, I, what the fuck just happened? So um, I, I believe they got me so fucking paranoid. I watched this Mario Batali one where uh, he had his friend do it. And, um, you know, he's going he's to show you how to make gnocchi. You, you, you just look it up. Just look at Mario Batali, fucking blah, blah, blah. You'll see the thing. They, they fly through him mixing the shit. And uh, but the big thing they kept saying was, is don't overmix it. Don't overmix it. You're going to get a tough pasta, yada, 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 and all that shit. And these fucking assholes, they just they blew right through it. And then I undermixed it. I forgot. Now I'm starting to feel like I already told you this one. Yeah, I told you this, right? Nia said you shouldn't make pasta anymore. You know, there you go. There's my supportive wife. I swear to God. Do you ever wonder why the woman that loves you is always shitting on everything that you do? You know, not everything you do, but anything new you're trying. They fucking shit all over you. You know what I think that is? I think that that's just some sort of fucking paranoia within a relationship. Maybe guys do it, too. I, I never dated a guy, you know. You know what? I think I'm going to try this summer. <laughs> do you guys still like me if I dated a guy for like three fucking months? You know? What if I dated, like, my doppelganger? I'm trying to get the most fucked up image you could possibly see to me. I'll, I'll date that guy from fucking, uh, oh, we're all wacky in the house over here. Whatever the fuck the name of that show is. You know, oh, look at you. You're, you're fucking, uh, I'm from Malaysia. Oh, look at me. I like show tunes. Hey, I'm the old school guy from fucking the Korean War, right? Am I describing my cartoon? I can't remember. Anyways, um, the fuck was I just talking about? Oh, God damn it. My fucking brain just goes in one straight line. And you just got to keep going. I got to keep going. If I come back around again, it's just like I don't even know where the fuck I was at. Back up, back up. It was before dating a guy for three months, but it was after gloomy, gloomy fucking weather. It was after the car, crooked car salesman. Come on, Bill. You coming around the mountain. You coming around the mountain. We well, going up or down, Lou. Remember that Mary Tyler Moore one? When Lou Grant had a great fucking idea and he, and he just forgot about it. He goes, oh, man, I had the best idea. And Mary Tyler Moore is trying to get him to remember. She goes, okay, okay, you're in the elevator. You're in the elevator. You're coming up. You're coming up. And he's going, yeah, 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 I was in the elevator. She goes, yeah, you know, you, 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 you press the floor. You're coming up. You're in the elevator. And you were thinking, he, right as he almost gets it, Ted Baxter just leans in. He goes, well, you're going up or down, Lou. <laughs> oh, speaking of that shit, you know what I watched the other day? I watched an episode of Gilligan's Island. The ones that were in black and white instead of watching March Madness, because I don't like the first couple of rounds. I know there's all those upsets, but I don't like watching fucking Bunker Hill Community College playing Duke. I know every once in a while they get beat. And I guess there was a bunch of fucking upsets. You know, I know that one fucking that that uh, that Austin Austin City Limits College. With that fucking, I couldn't tell if he was a lumberjack or a hipster. That fucking jacked white dude with the psycho beard, man. And the Hitler Youth haircut. I was like, that guy needs to one more win. And they, the, the other team fucking tipped it in. And they lost right at the fucking buzzer. But um, I was thinking that guy needs to get to one more round. And he is going to be, uh, he's going to be famous. You know? I just seen that because I was looking like, I, uh, I remember who he is. And I assume if I remember, then everybody else is going to remember because, you know, why wouldn't the whole world think the way I think? Well, shit, maybe I should run for president. I think when you have thoughts like that, that means that you're, you're designed to be a world leader. I have great ideas, and I think everybody, why wouldn't everybody like my ideas? And everybody should think the way I think, and everybody will be good if I'm running stuff, you know? And everybody will get the same amount of stuff, except I'll get a little bit more. And by a little bit more, I mean a bunch of hoes, a bunch of does. It's something else about my toes. Um, well, you know what? I, I can't remember what the fuck I was talking about. I did start talking about basketball. But you know something? They actually having a little bit of March Madness. The madness of March is coming down to uh, Anaheim. And um, I heard the uh, the Duke guys, the Duke boys... Hey, them Duke boys, we come right back. Um, are coming to Anaheim at the Honda Center. I think I'm going to go to that. You know? Who's getting who? I got a, two huge fucking shows coming up this weekend. 
one in Riverside and the other one at the Terrace Theater in Long Beach, California, which is really no big deal. It's just a beautiful theater that Richard Pryor uh, taped his first big special in. That's all. I'll just be standing on the same stage. No reason to prepare or be nervous for that one. I'm freaking out about that one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I just feel like uh, I'm already putting all this pressure on myself that if I don't have the fucking um, my show of shows that, uh, I don't know, the comedy gods going to be like, yeah. There's these comedians nowadays, you know, they're all selling a bunch of fucking tickets, but they, then they, they stink. They're not the real deal. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm thinking if I if I go out tonight, tomorrow and Wednesday, right? Do a couple, two, three. Okay. And then Thursday, right? I hit the Duke game. Then on fucking... Uh, Friday got my show, and Saturday got my show, and just knock those out. I, I feel like I'll be all right. I feel like I can take one fucking day off, you know? Am I nuts? Am I nuts because I didn't last night? This is the thing. I stopped smoking cigars. So you know what happens when you quit a bad habit? Something else fucking goes through the goddamn roof. You know what I mean? It's like if you quit smoking, you start eating, right? You stop boozing, you start shooting smack, Right? You say, I'm going to start cleaning up around the house. Next thing you know, you're beating your wife. And you know why? It's because (laughs) nobody is perfect. You ever go to a fucking AA meeting? They're all in there fucking chain smoking and fucking shoving donuts down their throat. They're still killing themselves. They just slid it over to something else. That's basically um, the most fascinating people I find is is the people that are just 100% straight edge and they eat like a, a micro, macrobiotic, microbiotic, whatever the fuck it is. Macrobiotic diet. I'm going to say macro. You say macro. I say micro. beep a da ba doo boo Those fucking people. But you know what it is? And they, they don't do anything. Okay? They fucking, you know, they drink fucking, you know, pure, the most purified fucking water out of a unicorn's horn or some shit, right? Just the most... <laughs> The most fucking cleanest living ever. But you know what? They probably kill themselves with the stress of knowing they're still going to die. You know? How how do you think you treat yourself when you really think about it? I I think I treat myself like... uh, I wouldn't say the way I treat a rental car. I treat a rental car pretty good. I don't beat the shit out of it. When I was younger, I used to. It was just funny. They'd give you a car and you just, you know... Remember, neutral drops, for some reason, were considered fucking amazing, you know? You just have it in park. You would, oh, no, you put it in neutral. There you go, Bill, neutral drop. And you would just floor it, get the RPMs up to about, oh, I don't know, seven, 8,000. And then you would just slam it into fucking drive. And you just heard that horrific sound of, I don't know what the fuck it is on an automatic tr- transmission, you know, with <laughs> the standard to be the clutch hitting that fucking engaging in whatever the fucking engages in. I don't fucking know. Basically gears n- m- slamming into other gears. I can't believe the teeth just don't fly off on both sides. I imagine eventually they do, but uh, we used to do shit like that. Uh, you know, you take the car off road. You could do a lot of shit back in the day before everybody had a fucking camera, you know? Oh, speaking of which, I got to tell you what I fucking saw. Oh, my God. I almost forgot to tell you this fucking story. Let me do a little advertising here first. Oh, look at that little teaser. Um, remind me to talk about the uh, the fucking local fucking wine thing I went on with my wife, mother-in-law, and my brother-in-law. Um, all right. Where the fuck is the advertising here for this week? If you knew Susie like I knew Susie. Oh, Oh, what a gal. Don't you love how they're just kind of calling her a whore? Oh, if you knew her the way I knew her. You mean you fucked her? Um, all right. Me undies, me undies. Drying out your fucking clams. Me undies, me undies. The butcher's name was fucking Sam. He was banging Alice and her clam was dry. He thought he was doing his job. He didn't know why. She had the first pair of fucking me undies. That was 1968. So they broke up. If you ask me, I thought she went down a different road. 
I mean, she was a lesbian. All right, MeUndies. Uh, <laughs> whether you're wearing a suit or sweats, you spend almost 24 hours a day in your underwear, unless you're an animal or uh, Matthew McConaughey, right? But instead of making a statement like Superman's tights under his clothes every day, um, your underwear is probably boring. MeUndies is here to change that. Um, please include the following. I'm going to. It's pronounced modal. Every pair of MeUndies is made from, susta- uh, sus- from sustainably sourced modal, a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. Now, can somebody tell me where the fuck this shit came from? This is, this is from a lab. You know what I mean? Please tell me there's not a group of people that are forced to go out into the fields and pick modal. You know? God knows there's going to be some great music that comes out of that one. Um, nothing can describe the fit and feel of me undies, me undies, drying out your ball bag. Uh, but once you try them on, you'll understand why they're called the world's most comfortable underwear, underwear, underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you don't love your first pair of me undies, they're free. No questions asked. I don't understand that. Why would you keep a pair? Because you can't give them back. You know? You can't have your dried up fucking genital sweat in those in the, in the undercarriage of those things. You can't resell those. Sure you can. You put them on the internet for those fucking people that like to sniff other people's underwear. <laughs> what is with those people? Were they a dog in their past life? What the fuck is wrong with them? I bet their noses are cold. The perverts have cold noses. Um. Anyways, MeUndies has dozens of styles and limited edition prints to help you make a statement with your underwear. Uh, whether anyone can see them or not, remember Superman. Um, okay, shipping in the U.S. is in Canada is free, and you can save up to eight dollars a pair with MeUndies subscription plan. Get the subscription or a single pair. Get twenty percent off your first order when you go to meundies.com/burr. Subscription. Jesus Christ! How much? How many? How much you shit in your pants every month? You got to have a subscription. Dude, I bought fucking underwear. I can't even, like, I buy it, like, and I just wear that shit till it's over. You know what I mean? I wear my underwear till it, all I got is just the band going around my waist. Looking like Chris Gatlin. Um, <laughs> um, anyways, get the subscription, blah, 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 blah. That's MeUndies.com slash Burr for 20% off your first order. Uh, MeUndies.com slash Burr. All right, Tracker. Smart cars, smart phones, smart homes. Technology has made everything smarter. Wick, oh my God, he's wicked fucking smart. But losing your stuff still makes smart people feel really stupid. I don't think it does. I think it just makes them frustrated. I think he just wrote that because it sounded good with the copy. Hey, Bill, why don't you just read the rest of it? All right, Tracker makes losing things a thing of the past. Tracker is a coin-sized device that locates misplaced keys Wallets, bags, computers, drug paraphernalia, whatever you're always leaving around the house but can't seem to find. Anything in seconds. Do you beat your children with a wooden spoon? Do they try and hide it? You won't lose it anymore. You'll be able to beat their ass in a second because Tracker will help you find that blunt object. Just pair Tracker to your smartphone, attach it to anything, find its precise location with the tap of a button. It's that easy. Lose your phone, press the button, or Tracker, and your smartphone rings even when it's on silent. You know what I just realized? Somebody's going to kill their spouse with a blunt object in the house, and then they're going to take it, and they're going to throw it in the river, but they're going to forget that device is on it, and the cops are going to use it, and then they're instantly going to be in the Hall of Fame of World's Dumbest Criminals. With over 1.5 million devices, Tracker has the largest crowd GPS network in the world, so your lost item shows up on a map even if it's miles away. You'll never have to use your brain again. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listen to this. Listen, uh, listeners to this show, Jesus, get a special discount of 40% off your first Tracker device. Go to the Tracker. T H E T R A C K E R dot com and enter promo code Burr. Bravo Uniform Romeo Romeo. The hardest thing you'll ever ha- ever have to find is their website. Snicker Snicker Snort. Go to the tr- go to the tracker dot com right now. Enter the promo code Burr for the forty percent off. Again, that's tracker dot com promo code Burr. 
All right. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, stamps.com. Mailing and shipping are a routine part of your business, of running your business. Important. Keeps your operation. What? Mailing and shipping are a routine part of your business. Important, comma. Keeps your operation going, dot, dot, dot. But if you, I feel like this should be way more dramatic, the way the writing is. Important. Keeps your business going. Your business operations going. But if you're making constant trips to the post office, that's a routine you need to change. There's a much more convenient way to do it. You tell your wife to get off her fat fucking ass and get no. Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all the service of the post office right to your desk. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. Print postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail. So you can focus on what really matters. Getting shit faced during the day. Growing your business. I use Stamps.com uh, anytime I send out any of my posters. Right now, you can sign up for Stamps.com and use my last name, Burr, for this special offer. Four-week trial plus a $110 bonus offer that includes postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. You click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, not the bottom, the top, and you type in Burr, B-U-R-R, that's Stamps.com, enter Burr. All right. Okay, so you guys ready for this little fucking safari thing? You know, I was doing real good with my fucking posture. Now I'm sitting on my lower back again. I need to sit up. Sit up straight. Take take goddamn charge of the fucking the goddamn game here. Um, so anyways, uh, it was my, my mother-in-law's birthday, and uh, it got rained out like a month or two ago. So we finally rescheduled this thing. We went on one of these wine trips out here to Malibu. Um and they have these giant fucking like 600-acre ranches out there. Because I, I used to always, you know, whenever I'm – flying by and i always look over and see all that fucking that there's basically no place to land you know i was kind of thinking like wow it's amazing that it hasn't been developed i guess because they're all fucking ranches eventually eventually they'll get rid of all the fucking grapes and they'll turn it into a uh, giant fucking i don't know i don't know what the fuck you call it apartment complexes or whatever so anyway so we go up there and first of all it's so up in the fucking hills like the gps isn't working and it actually ends up taking us to this this fucking um parole board thing that's in the middle there they got the barbed wire fence it looked like minimum security thing that we went into We're like all right i don't think this is the fucking uh wine place so we end up going back and they have on the farm you know they have a place where you can just go get boozed you know, boozed up, listen to some bands and that type of shit. And, uh, you know, there's something about wine drinkers. You just don't want to be around them. I don't know. It gives you a brutal fucking hangover. I like a nice glass, you know. I sound like fucking what's his face. Start talking about fava beans and somebody's liver. Um, I like a nice glass with a meal, but that's about it. But um, anyway, so they also have like a safari up there. They have like yaks. They have this fucking giraffe. They have camels. They had these emus. They had all this crazy shit. You could go up and feed them and all that type of stuff. So we're up there having a great time meeting these fucking yaks and zebras and stuff. And, um, and of course, you know, they got these giant bull-like things. And there's this fucking jerk-off with these – one of these guys, you know, that bought, like, the top-of-the-line loafers, you know. But they're loafers. They have these really – these fucking, you know – it's the kind of shit Ric Flair would buy as a joke, right? Just so we could hold him in some broke guy's face and say that his shoes cost more than a house. But this guy was, like, serious. And he's wearing them. There's, like, dirt on the ground, obviously. He's walking around in them. So, all of a, you know, I'm overfeeding a fucking yak. And all of a sudden, I hear the unmistakable sound of a bull hitting the fucking metal rail of a fence. I don't know why I know that sound. I think it's part of the fucking uh, caveman DNA that's still left in everybody that you, you know... Where you just, you ever have like walk down the street and all of a sudden dogs behind a fence and it growls and your whole body just fucking gets that tingle and you come up like, I'm telling you, if you don't, if you started running right then, you probably could run as fast as Bo Jackson. You know, that's how fast Bo Jackson could run just to gain four yards. He ran as fast as someone would run if a saber toothed tiger was fucking about ready to eat him. You know, that first fucking step. Um, <laughs> anyways. I heard that sound and immediately I just, I was just, I was already being like, all right, I'm going to get fucking trampled or worst case scenario. This thing's going to hook under my belt and my fucking pants are going to go down to my ankles as my junk is 
flapping around like that poor bastard everybody sees on. That, that guy's life is over. He's fucked. There's no way to laugh that off. You ever seen that one? The bull fucking gets in the guy's belt loop, tips him upside down, and just is just thrashing him around. The guy's pants go all the way down to his ankles. And people went from being like, oh, my God, that's going to die, to everybody just sitting there laughing at this guy. And, uh, you know, he's thinking like, oh, my God, this thing's going to gore my fucking dick, right? And all, and you know the chick that he finally got the fucking courage to, or, or trying to get, you know, the courage to ask up, ask up, ask out, <laughs> up, out, over, in, whatever. He wanted to take this bitch out, right? So he probably was awkward. So he's going like, you know what? I'll do something amazing. And then that'll give her my attention. I'll show you how, how, how courageous I am. Right. So he runs with the fucking bulls. And right as she was being like, you know, he kind of maybe seems like he's fun. All of a sudden he's upside down. And then there's his fucking little fucking little uh, schmeckle. Right. His Jewish people say fucking flopping around. And it was just over. That guy not only had to leave his hometown, his province, he had to leave the country. He might have had to leave the continent. But now with fucking YouTube, it's just, you know, and here I am talking about it. Right. Sex offenders have an easier time relocating than that fucking guy after that one. So anyways, um, so I hear that sound. And right as I turn around, I see the bull coming off the fence. And I see this guy in loafers, you know, had run back away from the fence. Right. And what was funny was I went over there and I fed the fucking bulls and nothing happened. Came over there. I had a relaxed energy. I fucking, you know. I had my fucking weight on my back foot. You know, I was standing like a fucking boxer. You know, I wasn't standing there flat footed like whoop, 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 whoop. when that fucking thing comes, I'm going to fall on my ass. I was already anticipating. I was like, I am not ending up in a fucking YouTube video. I'm already a white guy and we I already I am prone to walking up to animals like they're dogs. I don't know why white people do that, but I do that. I see a lion at the zoo, and I want to go up and give it a belly rub. Oh, you little fucking king of the beast, right? Where other groups of people, for some reason, they, they, they understand. Not even for some reason. What they're doing is common sense. Whatever fucking reason. White people, we just want to go up, you know. I don't know. It's fucking stupid, generally speaking, right? So, um, I'm like, what a fucking idiot. And you see the guy. He's got that look on his face. Like, I almost got hit in the face by a fucking bullhorn, right? And uh, surprisingly, the guides didn't say shit, right? And then we're all going to get back on the little saf- open thing uh, safari truck. And I hear, boom, I hear it again. And the same fight, look around again. Same fucking guy backpedaling in his stupid loafers. And they don't say a fucking word to this guy. So I'm just like, this guy is a fucking moron, right? So we get on the thing. And uh, we're driving over. And now we're going to go see this giraffe. This teenage giraffe named Stanley. The coolest fucking giraffe you're ever gonna meet it just was not afraid of people whatsoever which of course is dangerous the first thing i thought of when i fucking saw the giraffe it was like i remember seeing a giraffe on youtube kick a fucking lioness this lioness went to jump on the thing's back and it timed it perfectly okay like andre agassi's fucking that that fucking shot he used to do right up the fucking not the baseline right up the fucking whatever Used to rip that backhand out, whoosh, right up, and you know he always talked shit about. It. Made a lot of money with that shot, right? That's what the fucking giraffe did. But with its leg, kicked the lioness. And what are they? How much does a lion weigh? Like six hundred pounds, dude. He sent this fucking thing. It, it looked like it was doing like it was in the middle of doing a jumping jack, and it was just, but it was just like doing this airborne cartwheel, and it never came down. And this thing fucking flipped around like three times. And it hit the ground, and it did not get up. All right? I know I use this reference a lot, but you remember the last hit Brett Favre took? That's what this lioness looked like from a giraffe. I couldn't believe it. Like, I jumped up when I saw it. You know? It was like watching the nerd beat up the bully. All these guys were piling on. And what was funny, when the other lions saw that, they were all like, oh, shit. (laughs) I I didn't know the giraffe could do that. Yeah, it was like the Bruce Lee fucking... Was it the one-inch punch when he'd send somebody flying across the room? We get it, Bill. So that's that's all I'm thinking is I am not getting anywhere near that thing's fucking legs. So of, of course, they got like a 10-foot fence, and then you walk up. The thing was 16 feet high as a teenager, right? And you, you go all the way up, and all right at that level, it's just its head. And you were feeding it little 
pieces of banana and all that shit with the skin. They just cut it up in sections. And the way it would eat, it looked like an old man that took its dentures out. And it was adorable. And, you know, he fucking pet the thing on its head. It was perfect, right? But anyways, as we're pulling up to go see this shit, the guy goes, all right, he goes, now look, those camels over there, he goes, you got to be careful with those things. He goes, they're very aggressive. Um, you know, all they want is food. But if you don't have food, they, they're going to, you got a great chance that they're going to bite you because they're going to get it one way or another. It's just how they're wired and their necks are longer than you think. So don't be, you know, turning your back on them, trying to get a selfie because you're going to get bit. And he goes, and as much as I say this, you know, a couple, two, three people a month get bit, right? So he says this, all right? right. And all I was thinking was good fellas, right? And after all her yeah, yeah, bullshit, what does she do? She makes a fucking phone call from the home phone, right? Exact same fucking thing. There was these three women in front of us. And for whatever fucking reason, like the second he gave that speech, I was like, you know what? Fuck those camels. I'm not going anywhere near them. I didn't try to feed them. I didn't do I'm not fucking going to feed something. When the tour guy goes, we're fucking three people get bit a month. I'm just like, you know what? Guess who's not going to be one of those three? Old freckles over here. All right. So we go, everybody pets the giraffes. We look at these fucking emus, which are the creepiest goddamn animal ever. I don't know. They do. They have a look on their fucking face. I can't even, I can't, I'm trying to describe the look. It's like, just imagine if like you were in your backyard and you were just drinking a glass of lemonade and all of a sudden you saw the ground moving and a person just came up from under the ground. Just imagine how dirty their face would be. And as they walk towards you to take a sip of lemonade, just imagine that look on their face. <laughs> That's what it looked like. I went to feed one of those things, and it fucking came walking over like a zombie. Like, I don't know what it was. And they got this thing where they don't, they can't, like, just gently take shit. They, go, they do, like, fucking pit viper, like, <laughs> like their fucking head comes right at you. I held this shit out, and I, the second that thing locked eyes on me, I fucking just dropped the carrot and left. It's like, there, it's over there, stupid. And the thing was too dumb to fucking look down. Crazy. It was like, it, it had, like, I swear to God, like the, that description they have when people are on the front lines in a fucking war, like World War I. This thing looked like it would seen horror its entire fucking life. And it's just like, dude, you know, how about I just leave it here on the top of the fence and you figure it out. So anyway, so we're walking back to the, um, to the little safari truck and those three fucking ladies. Where are they at, everybody? Where do, you, where do you think that they're at? You think they're getting on the truck? You know? You think they're uh, getting ready to go enjoy a glass of fucking wine at the winery? No. Uh-uh. They're over by the fucking camels. And they're fucking getting really close, but they got carrots, so they're okay. But they're way in this thing's fucking wheelhouse. Okay? And I'm just sitting there going like... And I literally mutter to Nia, I go, Nia, film this because one of them's going to get bit. One of them's going to get bit, right? So the cutest one of them all, right? Fucking, what does she do? After this guy says, don't turn your back and try to take a selfie. What does this fucking woman do? She turns her fucking back. She's in this thing's fucking wheelhouse. She was so close to the thing, it almost had to double back with its fucking neck. It was what it did. It fucking, once it realized it didn't have any more carrots, it, she didn't, it fucking doubled back and fucking basically bit this woman right on her boob, her left boob. She had a jacket on and she just went like, ah, and fucking stepped away. Fortunately, it didn't clamp down and it fucking, it had, she had these disgusting, like just green, so like grass stains and saliva because the things fucking eat grass all day and she gets back t to the the thing and she's doing that whole oh my god that thing just like bit me in the boob right and the tour guide funniest thing ever he just looks at her and he goes oh, i fucking told you <laughs> he dropped the f-bomb 
He goes, I fucking told you. It's my favorite thing that I think I've seen. I can't remember. That reminds me of when I was a kid. If I, I was part of the last generation, the last tail part of if you slipped on the ice, it was your fucking fault. It wasn't the guy's fault who had the storefront. It's like, yeah, ice is slippery, stupid. Yeah, maybe, maybe next time you'll fucking be a little more careful. And then somehow it became it became the, the shop owner's fault that you fucking were walking too recklessly on ice. Like it's his ice. It's not his ice. It's made by the Lord, right? That's like McDonald's having to make salads. They took fucking responsibility rather than it's like, no, it's your fault, you fat. You ordered 50 fucking Big Macs, you cunt. You know? We're a business. If you order it, we're going to give it to you, you fucking dope. You know, what do you, what do, you do after? Go eat a whole fucking gallon of ice cream? What the fuck is wrong with you? And they somehow took the responsibility and they started making fucking salads. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So anyways, yeah, and that, that guy, he just, well, you know, I fucking told you. <laughs> Dude, it was like needle off the record. I couldn't fucking believe it. And they didn't say anything. It was like it was like watching Donald Trump in that first debate when he was still funny before it was just like, holy fuck, this guy's this guy might run the country. Now, who's getting who? He might speak for the country. He might pretend to be running the country. That's the real deal. That's why you can't be too afraid of Donald Trump, because at the end of the day, it's, the, you know, come on, come on, people. We all know, you know. I'll tell you right now, if I was fucking ISIS, those fucking dopes trying to sneak into this country and blow people up and shit. All those fucking idiots got to do is just get together their money and you just fucking put some money on Hillary, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, right? That's all you got to do. And then you buy a little bit of advertising time on all the major networks and you'll never hear about them again. That's how people, that's how those fuckers, you know, genetically alter food. You never fucking hear about it because they got their fucking money in everybody's pockets and everybody shuts the fuck up. So that's what ISIS should do. They should just do that. And then they, they could just walk into this country with a goddamn bazooka on their back and no one would say shit. Um, anyways. So, yeah, that's what it was like the first debate with Donald Trump where he was just they will decide. Oh, you said this about women. You said that about women. He said, no, no, no. I said about I said that about Rosie O'Donnell. And they're like, no, no. You said it about other women, too. And he just goes, yeah, you know, you're probably right. You're probably right. That was it. It was over. She's like, oh, my God, I think that me in the poop. And he goes, ah, yeah, I fucking told you. <laughs> no sympathy. No fucking sympathy. It was perfect. It's exactly it's exactly what I think most people need. You know, look, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have empathy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have sympathy and that type of shit. All I'm saying is there there is a time and a place for no sympathy. And that that was it. That was it was it was done perfectly. You know, and I think she's going to be a better person because of it. She couldn't even argue. It's like, oh, I fucking told you. And when you really think about it, it's like. When she comes, that thing bit me in the boob. It's like, it's like, I just fucking told you it was going to do that. Like, what do you think he's going to say? Oh, did it? Oh, I'm sorry. Did it do exactly what the fuck I said it was going to do? Um, and then that was it. And then the next thing we did was we fucking went over. We checked over all these original like fucking air streams. And then we were drinking wine. And like that all happened. Like we got on the, tr like it bit her in the boob. He said, well, I fucking told you. And then we were drinking wine outside. And I was just like, this, my, this is fucking awesome. That should be part of the tour. That was, I don't know. Is that weird? Am I making a bigger deal about it? It was so fucking refreshing. Yeah, fuckhead, you know. That's on you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, Billy Belgium. Hey, Bill, big fan. Are you planning a trip to Belgium in the fucking future? Um, can't wait to see you, uh, life on stage. Uh, you came close live L I V E. And right now I'm still, I'm sticking with that French, by the way, I am, uh, on Duolingo. I got 23 days in a row, Michael Jordan, 23 fucking days in a row. And, uh, I'm just going to keep fucking doing this shit. I try to get, uh, 200 points a day. Um, sometimes I don't, but I get at least a hundred. 
Although Tuesday, it looks like I only got 10. I did one lesson. Here I am for the week. I got like 160, then I got 10, 180, 210, 200, <clears throat> 110, and 230. That ain't bad. Um, hey, Bill, this isn't about you. It's about the fucking question. You're right. You're right. I get, I get distracted. I get distracted. Where the fuck am I? Ah, Jesus Christ. And there's another way I'm, I'm trying to learn French. I go to the Montreal Canadiens website and I go under the French side. And uh, I know, sacrilegious, but I fucking do it. And I, um, you know, what did I say? Uh, something learning the hard way the last time, like a, the Prendes, uh, something dear or something, D-I-R-E. I can kind of read it. I still can't fucking speak it. I stink at it. But at least I'm getting to the point where I can kind of read, you know, at a decent level. I've been going on YouTube and I've been watching these fucking, you know, they, they're like kids shows. I swear to God, I'm going to get put on a list, but I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning how to fucking read it while they're just going like the cat. The cat says meow, you know, meow, cat, meow. Oh, look at the dog. Oh, ho, ho, ho. They do it all in French, right? Le chien, le chat, le oiseau. Um, all right. Big fan. Are you planning a trip to Belgium in the future? Uh, can't wait to see you. Life live on stage, great brain, great humor. Love your show. I am absolutely one hundred percent going to get there at some point um, this year. I am planning a tour of Eastern Europe and then my usual run through uh, the whitest people of all time, from Finland all the way over to Iceland. And uh, I'm planning to end in Iceland and uh, spend an extra couple of days there at the Blue Lagoon Spa. And you got to do it. And you should go during the winter when all the fucking tourists are not there. You want to be there when there's snow on the ground. I mean, right now, I don't know if the Northern Lights is still, we probably missed it by now. But like, that's one, that's like a bucket list thing for me. I want to go there, see the fucking Northern Lights. When I went there, I felt like I was on the top of the earth. <clears throat> and it was the bluest place I'd ever been to in my life. The sky was so fucking blue. It was crazy. And, um. I'm telling you, it's right. Everybody always flies past it, but he goes right by it. Just fucking, you got to go to it. Um, I got to tell you, when you take a shower there, you got you, you are going to taste fucking sulfur. Um, that's a little gross, but other than that, um, it's fantastic. Okay, so I will definitely be there, hopefully by the end of the year. Our painting of Jesus laughing. Dear Billy Christ, my in-laws have had this hang, have had this hanging in their house since I've known them. And I get a good chuckle every time I see it. Hope you do too, man. At least one artist just depicts the guy as a jolly man. Now I got to go back because I copied and pasted it. Pasted it, did it? Copied and pasted it. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't even look like Jesus. I got to, uh, we got to, we got to tweet that, uh, that photo out. What made him laugh like that? Somebody was probably like, hey, you know, I uh, banged a hooker like you. Uh, do I still have a chance to get to heaven? <laughs> you know, you could have been laughing like that. You're going to be hanging on a cross like me. They're freckles. Um, all right. I'll definitely uh, I'll have to post it. I'm sitting on my lower back again. How does this happen? I just slide down the fucking couch. Um, all right. Girlfriend's dysfunctional family. All right. Uh, dear Billy Boy, a uh, huge fan of the podcast. Thank you. Anyways, I am a male in his early 20s living in a small one-bedroom apartment with my girlfriend. Recently, my girlfriend's mother has received a new job position that's much closer to us, and she is currently in the process of looking for a new place in our area. Oh, Jesus. I am all for my girlfriend being able to be closer to her family. Why? Why would you be all for that? Be all for it if they're cool. I'm telling you right now, do not marry anybody who does not have a cool fucking family. Okay? Because those motherfuckers are going to be in your house. You think you're going to marry her and then, yeah, yeah, all right, take it easy. Da, 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 da. You're just going to fucking waltz her out the door after your wedding? No, they're going to be calling your house. They're going to be coming over. They're going to want to fucking play with your kids. 
Okay, those people are you are marrying into the fucking family. So right now, I think what you're doing is you're trying to be a modern man. So you're just automatically going like, I, I don't, I, I'm all for it. I'm all for you expressing your opinions and having your mother be right across the fucking street. Listen, I'm probably projecting here. Um, like I said, thank God, thank Christ. Um, the lovely Nia has a wonderful family. Um, thank God. Thank Christ, because I know people in that situation, in that situation, like fucking misery, the misery of the family. Like, you know, they retire and then they just move to where you are and then they just come over all the fucking time and they have no fucking clue how annoying they are. And then if the wife doesn't fucking say anything, you, you're you got to step up. Oh, dude, fucking shit show. All right. Recently, my girlfriend's, uh, uh, I'm all for my girlfriend being able to be closer to her family as I enjoy their company as well. Oh, shit. You know what? I didn't read that part. Sorry. Uh, But the whole moving situation is starting to become a bit of a headache and is starting to impede on our own lives. Yeah. See, you're young. You're in your early 20s. Okay, here we go. My girlfriend's mother is currently in between places and might stay with us during the week. However, this is not the worst of it. My girlfriend has three other siblings that her mother provides care for, two brothers and one sister. Her oldest brother, in particular, is a bit of a black sheep. He is easily agitated by the smallest requests, like cleaning up after himself or remembering to lock the door. He is careless when it comes to using other people's belongings and does not clean up after himself. Well, you know what? That fucker, that, he can't stay there then. I would... I would be a bit more forgiving if he was younger than I am, but he too is in his early 20s like me. Now, having to deal with a family member like this may not sound like an issue. <laughs> Dude, this is, this is, this is making, I'm breaking out in hives reading this thing. This is how much of a fucking issue this is. Uh, especially if your girlfriend does not address what a douche her brother is. That's what you need. Okay. That's the keys to the castle. Okay. If there's someone in, you know, whatever, if you're a woman dating a guy, right? If, if he has some, if, if his sister's a cunt and he won't address it on any level, I'm not saying he literally has to drop the fucking, you know, the C note there, but you got, you got to, you got to fucking, you got to address it. Okay. You got to fucking address it. All right. So anyways, now having to deal with this, um, Deal with a member like this may not sound like an issue today, but I learned that my girlfriend's mother asked to bring my girlfriend's brother with her to stay with us for a few days. Let's face it, it'll be, probably be longer than that. After seeing firsthand how he acts with other people, especially his family, I want to say no and be done with it. But I'm sure this will open up more issues between myself and my girlfriend, her mother, and possibly her brother. Yeah, it'll bring up great issues. The fact that her brother's a fucking selfish douche. Dude, you are right now in the beginning of creating your adult life. So when you feel no, you say no. All right? And if your girlfriend gets fucking pissed, then fuck her. Okay? If she wants to break up with you, you know what you did, dude? You just you just walked away from what You know what you you fa- you fast forward. You're fast forwarding through the fucking nightmare and you're getting to the inevitable end of the fucking relationship without you being legally bonded to them, without you having kids that half fucking look like her and just remind you of them every fucking time, remind you of her every time you see them. This this is what you have to do. You have to listen to your gut in life. Your gut will tell you. You're saying, I don't want to do this, but then what happens is social politeness kicks in. Well, ah, you know, it's only for a few days, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to, fuck all of that. Fuck all of that. I'm not saying that you have to say it the way I'm saying it, but you have to have a sit down and just be like, listen, I don't mind if your mother stay here, but I'm not comfortable with your brother staying here. And if she says, why? It's my brother. Be like, because he's inconsiderate and he's reckless with uh, personal belongings. He forgets to lock the door and all that. And um, I don't think he's a responsible person. And just let it sit there. And if she has a fucking problem with it, who gives a, I don't, you don't have to be disrespectful. Just be like, I don't share your viewpoint, and I live here too, and I'm, sa- I'm saying no, he can't stay here. And then she'll have nothing to say other than, so you're saying he can't stay here. She'll just start repeating what you're saying and be like, that is what I'm saying. 
And then you let her huff and you let her puff and do all the fucking shit she's going to do. And you don't let that fucking douche step into the house. And here's the thing, dude. What do you what do you have to lose here? Other than your own happiness, you got to put a value on it. Anyways, let me just continue on here. Um, He says, after seeing firsthand how he acts with other people, especially his family, I want to say no. Uh, but I'm sure this will open up more issues between myself and my girlfriend, her mother, and possibly her brother, as it is an issue with my girlfriend, and I have argued about it in the past. Oh, yeah, so you've already done it. Yeah, dude, all right, you're already knocked down. You're already kicked in the door. Walk in. What would you do in this situation? I think I've already said it. Uh, and is there any sort of advice you can give me? If her brother does come to stay for a few days, how should I treat him knowing he'd probably just get agitated with me telling him, to clean up after himself. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Dude, this is the deal, dude. This is this is non-negotiable. This is non-fucking negotiable. Okay? This is your life. All right? And he's a fucking douche. And listen, man. If your girlfriend can't see what a fucking asshole this guy is. Dude, can you imagine if your brother was like this and it made your girlfriend feel uncomfortable? Would your brother be staying with you? He makes me uncomfortable. I don't know. He's weird. He doesn't pick up. He smells my me undies. Whatever the fuck he's doing, you'd be like, oh, that's it. You can't, you can't be here. You know? And when he, whoa, we're good. Because you're a jerk off. All right, there's a super right down the street. Good luck to you. You know? Um, I got to tell you this. this. This might be... This might be the old right there, Fred, for your fucking relationship, okay? You might have to throw down the gauntlet. All right, I got to tell you, dude, if, if, this, if this fucking asshole is already making you this fucking miserable, okay, just the idea of him staying with you for a couple, two, three days, all right, are you really going to marry this woman? You going to marry into that with that fucking shit show? And they'll be, oh, you're not marrying him, you're marrying me, we're very fucking seeing Fuck that until he goes out and he fucks his whole fucking life up, you know? And what, what happens to you? Do you I'm, I'm assuming you, you're planning on being successful in life, right? Which means you're going to go make a big bag of loot and get yourself a whip, right? Sorry. Um, no, you can have a nice car, you have a nice house, you can have a beautiful wife, you can have all that type of shit. You know what? You know what cunts do? Cunts think like, well, how come I don't have that? It's like, well, because you didn't work for it, stupid. And they're not going to think that. And they, they're going to want to come around and they're going to want fucking handouts. And if she, and if, if that fucking jerk off knows that his sister is a big softy, he's going to use her to get to you and all the shit that you fucking work for. Okay. I'm, I'm painting a very bleak scenario here, but, um, dude, you just, you say no, he can't stay here. You know, and if it really comes down to it, just be like, listen, I don't like the guy. Okay, and I don't think it's I just think it's how he's wired because you turned out great. You guys both had the same fucking parents. I don't know what happened to that guy, but he's a fucking. I don't say fucking that guy. He's just like, I don't want him in my I don't want him here. Your mother can stay. Plus that it's only a one bedroom apartment, you know, so we're going to be on top of each other. And I can't deal with that guy when I'm at your mother's house. Forget about in our one bedroom apartment. I, I don't want that guy here. I don't want his balls dangling in our fucking commode i don't want his pubes in my shower i don't want his hands in my in the fridge i just don't want him here. i don't want him here you know what's funny i don't even know this guy and i fucking hate him <laughs> there's no fucking way dude please can you please do this for yourself and this is a great exercise to have you know for both men and women you can flip this around like learning how to stand up to the person that you're with. You got to learn how to do that. And you just, sometimes you just have to, you got to have a fight. You just have to have a fight. And, um, and there is a freedom to not giving a fuck in a good way. What people think about you. I mean, do you, you, you who gives a fuck? If some piece of sh- selfish shit doesn't like you, what the fuck do you care? I, I, I geez, I would, I'd be just openly. I don't like you. Yes, you. I don't like you. I think you're a piece of garbage. And then when he looks at his girlfriend, he looks at your girlfriend or his sister, you just said, yeah, don't worry, I already told her. 
Uh, sir, please don't let him stay in your place. And please write, write in and please tell me, please tell me what happened. I don't know why, but I live for moments like this in life. You know, as much as I like making people laugh and that type of thing, I get even more enjoyment telling pieces of shit. No, it's one of the great things. And just the look on their fucking face, because the reason why a lot of pieces of shit are pieces of shit, because people politely maneuver around them. And when you can get that fucking mitt right in their face, you know, put your hand right in their forehead. Eh, that's about far enough there, Sparky. Oh, it's just, it's one of the great feelings in life. I think that's why God made douchebags. Just so, you know, someone like yourself can have that feeling. <laughs> I'm really coming off arrogant here. For, you know, I'm probably the douchebag too. Anyways, all right. Fiance's wedding plans. Hey there, Billy Blue Band. Blue Bland? The fuck is that? Um... First, let me say, I can't see, I can't wait to see you in Orlando on May 7th. I don't know why I haven't seen you perform live yet, but you are my, you are the last of my top 10 comedians to see before I die. Oh, Jesus. Um, there's way more that you should see than that, but I am, I am very flattered that I am one of the 10. Okay. So he says, I've been engaged for three years now. All right, dumper. You don't want to marry her. Do I really need to read the rest of this? Who the fuck is engaged for three years? He said, and me and my lady are in the first steps of finally planning our wedding. I'm, I am simple and I'm, and am okay with something small and would rather save money for our honeymoon and down payment on the house. And let me guess, she wants to spend a ton of fucking money. My fiance wants a destination theme wedding. I'm not opposed to compromise and have a destination wedding, but she wants the theme to be the little mermaid in Hawaii. She's adamant about this and has these horrible outfits picked out for the whole wedding party to wear, including myself as Neptune. I don't believe this. I'm calling bullshit. Uh, but you know what? As always, I'll read it like it's true. Um, I'm 37 and she is 28, if that matters. I sincerely love her, but she won't let this go, and I absolutely refuse to go through with that. I don't want to lose her in my life, but I've tried everything I can think of to talk her out of it. And honestly, it's a deal breaker for me. Please tell me your thoughts. And if you have any advice, I'd be very grateful. Thanks and go fuck yourself. All right. Well, this isn't a joke question. Um, you've been engaged for three fucking years. Okay. That's weird. I think that's something going on there. And, uh, you know, you're, you're a little bit country. She's a little bit rock and roll. Remember that the old fucking Donnie and Marie show. Usually sometimes opposites, you know, you know, she's that part of you. She completes you. I don't, I don't think she's I, I just, this is a shit show. If this is true, you are, you are. Do you understand that when you inevitably get divorced from this fucking woman, that you are going to get no sympathy from anybody? There, it will first be, oh my God, a divorce. I heard, you know, other than losing a loved one, that's the most stressful thing ever. But when you tell the story that you dressed like Neptune at your own fucking wedding. And right then, everybody's going, yeah, well, you know, I fucking told you. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, you walk away from it. You're 37. You're fine. You'll meet somebody else, okay? You, you, get on, you don't have a biological clock. This is one of the great things about being a dude, you know? But it all balances out because we die eight years before them, you know? So they get the little, little bit, you know, live a little bit longer. Sitting in that coffee house, you know, eating those fucking weird chocolates. Um, <laughs> he said... Oh, this is somebody else's. I'm sorry. I thought that's how he signed off. Um, yeah, I would walk away from this whole fucking thing. How many more red flags need to be shook in your face? You just walk away from the whole fucking thing. You, you can't, oh, my God, dude. What kind of fucking issues does she have that she wants to have? A little, oh, my God. She one of those women that has that goo goo gaga creepy ass fucking voice. She talks like she's fucking six. Oh, God, that gives you the fucking chills. Can you be a fucking adult over here? What do, you, what do we, I mean, what, what if you wanted a Scooby-Doo themed fucking wedding, right? You wanted her to dress like fucking that, with the, the Janine Graffalo redheaded one, you know? And her sister to dress like Daphne and you were going to be fucking shaggy. And the best man was going to dress like Fred with that scarf around his fucking, why, 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 why the, f I don't believe that question. I just don't, Okay. 
And if you fucking marry her, you deserve it. You know, and when you come crying up to me, I'm going to steal from that fucking tour. I fucking told you. <laughs> All right, squats. Hey, Billy Birdlegs. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I've been listening to you talk about the way you work out on the podcast. And I got to chime in. Do some fucking squats, dude. Squats are not a leg exercise. They are a compound full body movement. Ugh, this is already making me tired. Uh, put a couple hundred pounds on your back. Just push your legs and watch while your frail, freckled spine gets twisted like a pretzel. Well, why would I want to do that? Squats and deadlift, which I recommend too, uh, need you to engage damn near every muscle in your body. If you want to put on some real muscle density, stop being such a cowardly little cunt and learn to squat and deadlift. Dude, I don't want to walk around all bulked up. You know, start wearing tank tops. I'm not trying to do that. Jesus Christ. He said, I recommend watching Ed COA and apostrophe at squat and deadlift videos from super training on YouTube to start. Dude, I'm not trying to get into the NFL. Uh, then watch the rest of their content and learn what the fuck you're doing. I wrote some stuff about my experience with adding squats and deadlifts to my routine. You can read it or not. Just lift some heavy shit. Stop being a bitch and go fuck yourself. All right. I like the way this man speaks. He gets right to it. He's very direct. Uh, my experience. When I was younger, I used I used to be a mirror muscles guy. Mirror muscle guy, too. Fuck are you talking about, dude? I got a pegboard. I got those uh, atomic fucking... Uh, I'm doing all... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do like half... Um, what is that? Uh, American Ninja Warrior fucking thing. I'm building that in my garage. All right? You with your fucking... Schwarzenegger workout from 1978. Stop acting like you're in the future, you fucking cunt. I was decent. You know, you came in, you were talking a little bit fresh. You need to fucking stand down a little bit here. Um, he said, I got older and I started working in a chocolate factory. You know, everything seems like a lie this week. You worked in a chocolate, cho were you in a fucking tree making cookies? Amazingly, doing cur curls and benching 135 after spending the day sitting at my desk shoveling free chocolate in my face did not nothing to stop my belly from growing. Well, yeah, well, neither were doing squats. Okay, if you don't fucking eat anything else but cookies. Anyways, he goes, now I squat, bench, and deadlift like a power lifter, and I am stronger and more jacked than I have ever been. Yeah, and you stop eating chocolate. Um, not only do I actually have legs now but my chest arms and back traps everything are bigger than ever i just i can't recommend the videos from super training enough all right i'll check it out the guys are hilarious strong as fuck and there there is tons of great info on there anyways i appreciate the podcast best of luck with the new home gym and again go fuck yourself all right cool i will definitely check that out thank you so much for that information once again for people at home ed it said coa and apostrophe s for some reason i don't that looks like it's missing something but anyways, it's called uh, Super Training. So if you spell the name kind of like that, it ought to come up in your uh, your Google search there. Okay, about driving and in, diving into caves. Uh, hey, Bill, you were talking about divers with those caves. Here's a documentary of Finnish guys who legally, illegally, who go illegally to their dead friends' bodies. What? From their last trip. I think it was made illegal to go there after they died because it was too dangerous to go to those caves, but they went anyway and made a movie about it. Come to Finland soon and go fuck yourself. Well, why don't they retrieve the bodies? Is everybody lying to me this week? Why can't you be honest? All right, the last one here. Uh, girlfriend is good friends with dude she met on Tinder. Uh, hey, Billy Red Burke. Uh, Bork, kind of, I guess it's supposed to be like Ray Bork, Red Bork. Um, so recently, I was talking with my girlfriend about one of her guy friends. The two of them seemed pretty close. He did a photo shoot for a t-shirt company she's starting in, and she even said, we're like the same person. Yeah, dude, it's over. It's over. She hasn't blown him yet. She's gonna walk away. Something she has said, uh, something she has said to me. As we're talking, she reveals that she met this dude off of the dating and actually just about fucking app, Tinder, before 
Dude, you, you wrote this so bad before she, we got together. I'm just going to read it how you wrote it. I tried to play it cool, let her talk about him, and just brush it off as whatever. Dude, this is the brainwashing of the American male now, where everything is, if you even question a woman, it's like, wait, was that date rape? So you just ignore all your fucking instincts here. I tried to play it cool. Yeah, her douchebag brother who is totally inconsiderate wants to stay here. You know, I'm all for that. You're not all for that. Your soul is screaming no. You're playing it cool because you're not cool with it. Yeah, why don't you go hang out with some fuck buddy you met on Tinder and see how she fucking likes it, right? Anyways, well, the two of them text quite a lot. And the other night she received something, I think, from him, and she laughed. Now, I am ordinarily not a nosy type, but the situation is weird. So I asked, what's funny? She flipped. She said, I'm being too nosy and trying to pry into her personal life. Oh, my God. And then did you give her a sidekick right out of the fucking bed? He goes, I mean, she really flipped her shit about it. She claims I'm being paranoid and that they are just friends. I don't know, Billy. If they fucked, what's to say they won't do? Dude, what do you mean you don't know? He finishes it with, am I being paranoid? Should I not give a shit? Or, or should I kick this chick to the curb? Dude, punt her to the curb. Right in the seat of her fucking lion pants. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just say, why are you breaking up? I go, because you, because uh, the guy on Tinder completes you. Go get with him. Oh, my God, you're being paranoid. No, I'm not. You guys are fucking. In my heart of hearts, you guys are fucking. And if you're not, you're gonna. And to be honest with you, you probably should be. You're fucking laying in bed with me giggling about his goddamn text. Just go over there and suck his dick already. They give me my keys. <laughs> That's it. It's fucking over. All right, that's the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you Thursday.